Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another very special, as always, episode of the Hyperconscious Podcast. We hope you enjoyed our latest episode where we sat down with the outstanding Casanova Brooks. Today, for episode number 303, we are going to do a five-minute clinic on reflection. And I'm not talking about the mirror. Uh, well, <clears throat> okay, so speaking of reflection, I wanted to talk quickly about something specific. So I was on the phone with one of my clients, Alex Hinkle, and it was last night, and we were reflecting on how far he's come in one year. So he used to work at Longhorn, he used to drink often, and now I believe he's over almost 400 days sober, and he's now the director of operations for one of the fastest growing entrepreneurship education companies in the world. And the systems that we've developed in his life, he is now responsible for literally implementing those systems to the entire Social X team. And it's just unbelievable what can happen when you stay consistent with one on one coaching. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. Kevin and I have mentors and coaches, and we are mentors and coaches. And if you're struggling in your life, coaching is definitely going to help you get to the next level. Fire. Reach out to Kevin or myself, and we will help you. That, imagine having someone in your corner where it was their job, literally their job, to help you win. That's what coaching is. That is what coaching is. I actually had a client reach out to me today and said, I miss you, I want to work with you again, and now we're going to start working together again. So I th- it's one of those things where you don't understand how important it is until you stop doing it. Right. Right. When you stop doing what got you to the dance, you don't dance anymore, and that's what it's like for a lot of people. All right, let's get into this. Five-minute clinic on reflection. Yes. So I was a couple things. So basically my main takeaway for you if you're watching this or listening to this is most people on the lower end of drive to five, people who aren't necessarily super confident, but they do they do have a high level of ambition. This is what happens. You will focus way more on the distance between where you are and where you want to be versus the distance between where you are and where you once <clears throat> were. So you need to focus on the progress, not how much is left. And I think that's where a lot of people are. Now, do you have a lot further to go? Yes. But the life that you're living, the things that you're doing, at one point you probably thought were impossible. Right. Right. I had a moment today where I was like, I can't believe we have a business. Right. Right. I never thought I was going to be a business owner. I didn't, I never planned on that. Right. Right. I, I never planned on that. And now that's a thing. Now, in times of stress, it's easy to forget and think like, oh, I still have years to go. But if you look back, I'm already three years in. I've been doing this for three years. Maybe I have three more years. Maybe I have, you know, six more years. Maybe I have nine more years. But it's three years less than I, I would have, right? So I want you, if you're watching this or listening, like, that's why I talk about reflection. Because if you're in a stressful place, I always suggest people look back. That's what I do. When I can't sleep and I'm having a rough night, I look back. So I recently watched episode, I think it was like 20... It was 25 or 26. It was old. It was old. And reflecting on, like, I thought I knew it all. Like, I (laughs) I genuinely did. I remember (laughs) saying, you know, for the first time in my life, I know that what is, it's not happening to me, it's happening for me. And I feel like I'm living 100% on purpose versus by accident. And just the way I was saying it was like, it was arrogant because my level of awareness was not at my level of confidence, Mm. right? I thought I knew. And that was like, that was two years ago, (laughs) you know, and so much has changed since then. But when I look back, so if I have a rough night, say I have a rough night tonight and I'm saying like, I am, I have so far to go. I've given, I've only given five speeches, right? I've coached X amount of people. I've only done 300 podcast episodes compared to Joe Rogan's, you know, 2000. And then I take a look back two years ago and I look at Alan and I, you know, swearing a lot more. Right. Right? The camera angles were terrible. We some episodes we didn't have the camera. <laughs> right? That we had different equipment. If I look back and I really really Kevin shirtless. Kevin shirtless, yeah. <laughs> if I really really emotionalize how far I've come, that truly I to me that proves that yeah, I have some distance to go, but I can make it. And you can too if you're watching or listening. But if you're always if you're always focused on how far there is to go and you're never looking on how far you've come, you're never going to feel like you're going to make it. I second this so strongly, especially recently, because I told Kevin that I recently saw a Facebook memory come up of 10 years ago where I said, <clears throat> and I quote, it was a Facebook post, this was before adults were on there, and it said, 
I read somewhere that alcohol was bad for you, so I quit reading. Mm. Uh, like, okay, obviously that was somewhat of a joke, but it really also kind of wasn't. I didn't read books back then, and I did drink a lot and often and too much. And it's it, it's unreal how different my life is now. I can't even imagine not reading books. Right. I not having ever read the compound effect, not have or, having ever read the seven ha- habits of highly effective people. Like you're going to have to reflect on how far you've come. And that's why I mentioned Alex Hinkle as well. It's like when you're in the grind, when you're in the day to day, it can seem so freaking overwhelming and you can feel like you're never getting anywhere. But the compound effect of the long term, again, a quote I always go back to, we drastically overestimate what we can do in a day and we drastically underestimate what we can do in a decade. I feel that way all the time. I almost never, I'm doing a new journaling habit where I ask myself two simple questions. Number one, how much did I maximize my potential and impact today? Zero to 10. And then number two, what am I going to do tomorrow? Three things I'm going to do tomorrow to be more effective. And I'm the highest rating I've gotten so far is an eight. So on the day-to-day, again, micro failure for macro success. On the day-to-day, I, I don't want to say I feel like a failure, but I definitely am struggling to keep up a little bit. But when you look back on the macro, it's like, oh my God, yeah. Like, look how far we've come, especially when we look at those old episodes. Well, it's another reason to journal. Right. Again, I look back and I, I remember writing, I'm so grateful for my relationship. This was months before Tyler and I started talking. Dude, right? I know. I'm only four and a half months in and I'm already, the law of familiarity starts to creep in of like, remember your greatest challenge today was most likely at one point a dream. And that's, that's reflection. Yeah, I just, that's my thing. Like if you guys are watching or listening to this and you feel stuck, you feel like you're in a rut, you feel like you have miles to go, I'm sure you do. But you have also put miles in the rear view and make sure that you not only admit that, but you count that as a win and you're conscious of that because- it's like, you, yeah, you're always going to have miles to go, but you're always going to have miles behind you. And think of what the miles behind you actually taught you. Right. And what you're going to learn in the miles to come. Ten the second only, blip. Oh, go ahead. Ten second blip. Yeah, I would say this. The only wrong answer is to not keep moving forward. I like that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I know we talk about reflection a lot, but one of the reasons we talked about it today is because... From working with people and knowing myself and knowing other people that reach out to me, like one of the biggest things that people are lacking is, is stacking wins. When you go to bed at night, you should be reflecting on your wins. And most people don't do that. Right. Now, on the micro and the macro, like how many wins have you had over the last year? If you wrote them down, you'd be able to go, you know, go back and look at them. I have to do that more as well. Same. All right, what is our next episode on? Uh, <clears throat> oh, wait. Check that phone. Also, 10-second blip for you. 10-second blip for me. Oh, my goodness. Um, distance is far more important than speed. Some people are going nowhere fast. <laughs> oh, that's fire, man. That's fire. Uh, the next one is a small talks episode on taking the leap. Ah, yes, yes. We are going to do a small talks episode on taking the leap. The leap can come in many different ways. You go to a networking event and somebody challenges you to do something. You feel confident in that moment. You ask a question to somebody, that could change your life. Taking the leap could be investing the money to get a coach. It could be us investing money to build our website. Like Amy you have to mall. figure out Amy at the mall. You have to figure out what will it take for you to get out of your comfort zone and take that initial leap because that initial leap will change your life. If Kevin never started this podcast, none of this would be possible. True. And that was a leap of faith. It was. And here we are. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you enjoyed this episode and we will talk to you on Wednesday. Talk to you soon. Bye.